Ordering a cab isn't always the safest of activities. Over the years, there have been many cases of people impersonating ride-hailing drivers, and sometimes this is in order for them to commit a crime. So how safe are you when you hail a cab? Tonight, we give you tips on how to stay safe and how to be aware of the environment that you are in and indeed what to do if you feel unsafe. To guide us through this is Augustine Lokwang. He is a security expert. Many thanks for joining us in studio. Thank you very much. Let's begin, begin with essential taxi safety tips for a traveler. Yeah, thank you, Lillian. Uh, I think, first of all, uh, every person who intends to use a taxi must uh, in the current day and time, establish the vehicle that is, is he or she is going to board is actually one that is registered in the application that uh, operates that taxi. So you want to really verify that it's the correct number plate, it's the correct uh, driver who really is picking you from whatever location. But, but besides that, you, before even ordering the taxi, you've already processed the environment and you have picked um, how safe uh, you are. If there are any vulnerabilities and, and risks uh, related to the journey you're about to start, and, and that way, then you would have uh, taken the decision to board the taxi on the basis of a bit of basic analysis of the immediate environment. Is time a factor? I mean, are we necessarily more <coughs> compromised depending on the time of the day? You are significantly safer during the day because the conditions of, 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 of getting in trouble are not equivalent to the conditions uh, during the night. You have literally uh, more vehicles on the road. Uh, there are more people uh, around you. So you are less at risk uh, mm -hmm. during the day, irrespective of whether it is uh, a taxi driven by a driver who has been, uh, you know, uh, enlisted in a, in, a, in, a, in a taxi company. Uh, different people have different motives. Mm -hmm. And talking about different people having different motives, nowadays you have an option of actually choosing a woman, right, a woman driver you know, different apps will give you that option. Sure. So does a woman rider plus a woman <coughs> driver equal safety? Are you necessarily safer that way? There's a general, there's a general perception that women uh, drivers, especially in these uh, taxis operated by uh, various apps, uh, are, are actually presenters uh, drivers will not pose uh, any harm to uh, passengers. Uh, the, 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 this is taken greatly to be the, 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 the case, and in, indeed, uh, looking probably at the statistics of uh, uh, taxis that have been involved in crime, uh, there are more women. There are more men than women. So, uh, to some extent, women tend to be uh, drivers who deliver you home safely mm -hmm. than men, yeah. and uh, they. they even in my case, if I would want to go home and have an option of being dropped by a woman, I think as a man and uh, fully aware at uh, what time of the day, uh, assuming it was late in the night, yeah, maybe I'll, yeah. I'll take the woman as... Um, and, and let's talk about, you know, basic questions such as where to sit in the cab, you get into a cab, <coughs> perhaps um, you're inebriated, it is late in the night. Does where you sit make a difference in the event of a predatory attack? Sure, sure, it does. Because um, if your instincts, and, and this is why I would say your initial assessment and analysis of your uh, immediate circumstances, uh, you know, make you believe that, yes, I've got it in a car. However, I don't think I trust the person operating the car. The best uh, place to sit in the car is the back, the back seat. And it is based on the common sense that you have more room, especially if you are alone, and, uh, and that you have command of the, the front, uh -huh. which is basically the seats, the, the driver's seats and the other seat. Right. And in case of anything, uh -huh. you have some room of man maneuver to either exit the car uh, or even uh, manage the driver who, who, who probably will be putting your life into into danger. Right. So. Now, um, in the event that you notice that something is amiss, you feel unsafe, 
your instincts, what's the first thing that you should do? First of all, you don't panic because the moment you panic, then, then uh, your situation uh, complicates. You have a right as a passenger to order the driver to stop. And you have to make this decision at appropriate locations along the route. And in this case, uh, if you, for example, you, the, the vehicle approaches a, road, a police roadblock, that is an opportunity to actually be able to stop the car and escalate the matter to the police at the roadblock. That way you have actually exited the, the, the more of a conditions of, of harm. Uh, if, you, if you find a place that is uh, fairly with a number of people, um, and you feel that you're safe, that, that, that also becomes a location that you can be able to stop and exit the car. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so it's, a, it's purely based on your judgment yeah. and uh, your appreciation of the route mm -hmm. as you are traveling with in, in the car. And finally, in terms of authorities and regulation, are authorities doing enough in terms of regulation? We've had reports of muggings, um, you know, abductions sometimes, people actually hailing cabs and seeing that the driver that comes or even the number plate um, is not the same one that's registered in the app. So in terms of regulation, yeah. what can be done? Okay. Uh, I think as, as far as what authorities are doing uh, to set up uh, probably a taxi company in this country, has a certain conditionalities, and that uh, these are conditions that are set, set out by government. Uh, however, uh, compliance with those conditions is not enough. And I, have, I would say there's a, there's a triangle of, of, of stakeholders. One of the stakeholders in the triangle is government, the companies operating the taxis in the country, and the public, who are actually the consumers of the taxi services, mm -hmm. there, there is a, there is need for a public a safety awareness or education. B basically, exactly what we are doing now to raise awareness of would be uh, users of taxi services on how to conduct themselves in a situation that uh, is endangering their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think. Uh, most taxi companies have invested in uh, technology. This is GPS, uh, we have panic buttons, we, they, they, they have control rooms where these vehicles are actually, they, the fleet of vehicles out on the road mm -hmm. uh, offering these ta ta taxi services are actually being monitored. So I, I think what needs to be done is uh, to how government and the, the, the companies, these companies can raise the awareness of the clients mm -hmm. and that the, there is a, the, the primary responsibility is on the individual right. because decisions you make to be able to move one, from one point to the other uh, will either make you safe or predispose you to uh, abductions or mm -hmm. kidnappings. Many Thank thanks. You. Very, very helpful and timely Thank conversation you. indeed. We've been talking to Augustine Lokwang. He is a security expert. Be sure to... Um, Catch this interview later online and you'll see the security tips that have been shared within and you'll be able um, to use that to guide you as you hail your next time.